Well, uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining us today and taking some time out of your day. Um, this webinar is, you know, about bridging the gap, you know, why maintenance teams need uh, maintenance tracking along with digital records. Uh, no secret out there, everyone's trying to find a way to, you know, streamline their paperwork process and, uh, you know, bring everything into a digital aspect. So um, just to introduce us, um, I'm one of your co-hosts today. Uh, my name is Raul Gill. I'm with uh, Varian. I'm an account executive on the team. I've been with Varian for about five years, uh, work with a lot of uh, operators ranging from sizes to one to two aircraft operators, all the way up to the operators in the triple digits. And then uh, let Kent introduce himself. Hello, everybody. I'm Kent Picard. I have been uh, focused on software solutions in the business aviation industry for the last decade or so. Uh, looking at my my stock photo, I've, I've probably aged a little bit since then. So that's probably closer to the beginning of my journey. Um, ultimately, right now, I'm the CTO of Blue Tail and have had the honor of working with a, a diverse set of customers uh, in business aviation to to help maintenance departments uh, positively impact their outcomes uh, using technology. So really excited to be here today and, and talk to you guys. Awesome. And then to introduce our panelists, uh, we'll just take it in order. Um, but uh, Adam, go ahead if you uh, want to introduce yourself there. So my name is Adam Laker. I'm with uh, Kroger Aviation out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we operate uh, three Challenger 300s out of Cincinnati, a uh, Citation Excel out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and a Citation Excel out of Portland, Oregon. Um, we've been with Flight Docs for about 12 years now, and we've uh, been with Blue Tail for about a year now. Awesome. Uh, Joe? Joe, you might be on mute. Can't see your screen there. Sorry. Um, Joe Nelson, Senior Vice President of uh, the Maintenance Department here at Fly Exclusive. Um, been here for about five years now. Um, <clears throat> worked uh, quite a few different roles here. Um, stood up the MRO, got its certificate also. Um, but we've been with uh, Varian now, which was originally Flight, flight Docs for uh, going on probably two and a half years now, and then Blue Tail about a year now. So we've, we've, uh, that that's our story. <laughs> Mr. Mark. All right. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Thomas from PNC Financial Services Group out of Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, we have a Challenger 3500, two 350s, and a Global 5000 Vision. Uh, been with uh, Flight Docs originally since probably 2009 and with blue tail for about two years uh we're really kind of enjoying what's going on with it so far been with the bank for 33 years so how are you awesome thank you gentlemen so uh we got a poll question coming up should be popping up on your screen but um you know how is uh digital how digital uh is your operation today um you know a lot of different people i speak out in the field with um, some people have gone and adopted full digital uh including e-signatures and essentially removing the printers out of their operation um then there's you know digital paper light where some things may be still done um you know with wet ink uh they'll eventually scan them in have them uh you know, logged into their, you know, entered into whatever platform they're using and then still kind of operate in a digital fashion. And then there's still the, you know, operators out there that are primarily paper-based. So everything that they're doing is being printed out, wet ink, um, log book entries are, you know, sometimes even being done on like a Word document or something of that nature. And uh, everything's done, you know, and printed out and put into a physical place like the banker's boxes, for example. And then just maybe if you're just not sure of where you're at currently in the digital world. Give you guys a couple seconds to answer that. All right. Moving on here. Okay, if you want to take this one. Uh, sure. Uh, do we want to hit the results real quick? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't, I don't have control of that, but, uh, gotcha. Yeah. It looks like the, um, 
the majority, yeah, the, the biggest uh, cohort is mostly digital paper light, followed by primarily paper based uh, at 33 um, percent. Yeah, just just curious. Yeah. Around the horn real quick. Um, you know, Joe, how would you have answered that question? Uh, we're probably um, 90 percent digital. Um, we generate our work orders out of Arion, and then we communicate those to the vendors, whether it be internal or external via email. Um, and then as the work gets performed in those outstations, we retrieve the, the paperwork via email, um, and then it goes into Varion and then into Blue Tail, uh, for historical. So, um, a lot, in a lot of cases, we do maintain a paper copy, um, when required but we are striving for 100% digital here in the in near future. Also, we're progressing very rapidly to uh, a portion of our MRO being uh, using work center, very on, very on work center. And so we think that's gonna be a huge um, efficiency for us when it comes to paperwork uh, documentation, especially if we can get, um, or when and, and uh, how we get our approval from the FAA. Um, I, I do have that process done and I've been working with, uh, fly the whale also, um, it's another company out there that Chris, he, he, he said I could, I could talk about them if I wanted to, but, uh, they're also submitted their FAA certification or the authorization for digital, um, signatures and digital record keeping. And so, um, it's, it's a fairly straightforward, uh, process. And if anyone needs help with that or, feel free to distribute my information or Chris's and we can help out with that. Right. And uh, the, the way that that's possible, I mean, uh, Varian is compliant with the circular. It's AC 120-78A. So that uh, pretty much entails, uh, you know, electronic records, uh, e-log books, and then the ability to use e-signatures and meeting the compliance requirements for those particular uh, points. Um, some of the things Reasons being is, you know, password protected signatures beyond your actual login password, and then also having version control. So in the event that there is an adjustment made to a document or signatures need to be removed, it keeps, you know, the uh, historical versions um, as record in the system. Yeah, I would, I would say that one of the key features for us here, because of a, us being a, a larger 135 operator, uh, the the capability that Varian has to allow other uh, operating systems to integrate with it are, is huge for us. And so for all of our uh, KPI type stuff and or um, use any integration from sales to operations to any of that can be uh, very easily done. And it's not so easily done with some of the other uh, maintenance data systems out there. Awesome. Uh Thanks. Adam, I, I believe you guys um, in the Part 91 world, fewer hoops to jump through to, to make decisions operationally. Are you guys uh, using full uh, e-signatures? So we're, we're a Part 145 repair station too. So we're probably 90% digital right now. Um, our repair station, you know, we have all the approvals for all the e-cigs and all the electronic documents, but they still like to see a paper copy held for two years even though we don't have any external customers, we're just working on our own airplanes. So um, that's kind of how we are. We still print out, you know, the flight docs cards and keep them for two years. And obviously putting all our logbook entries in the uh, permanent logbooks. So, but, you know, we really like the e-signature and uh, being able to do most everything electronically. So. Copy that. And then, yeah, rounding it out, Mark. Um... Yeah, where would you guys put yourself on that spectrum of, of digital to paper? I'd say we're close to 95 to 97% digital. We're still pulling off the uh, log entries off of flight docs for a hard copy just as a check and balance right now, but it's being fed directly through Blue Tail. And uh, I have one of my lead techs as the uh, administrator for Blue Tail, and he reviews the logbook entries in the whole short column there. And before he pushes them in after I've already gone through them and approved them, but we are planning on transitioning here to full digital within the next three to four months total. So we're really close. We're already using e-signatures and we are strictly a 91 operator and the FAA really doesn't care. 
So we can do whatever we want to do. They're on board with it or they're not. They don't care. So makes sense. Um I, I think, yeah, Raul, yeah, to, to come back to the slide here, the, the digital transformation in business aviation. Uh, the, the point of this slide, in my mind, is that uh, digital transformation is coming. Uh, we, we know it is because we can observe what's happened in other industries um, and understand like a similar journey can, can and will happen in aviation as well. You know, I, I'd point out healthcare in particular, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, stakeholders, players in that industry, you know, saw an inter insurmountable challenge. You know, how can we get there? From where we're starting with this immense amount of paper records about people um and you know i'd contrast that today you know if, if you are hospitalized while traveling somewhere else it, it's very possible and probable even that they'll be able to get access to your important patient records to uh to be able to provide you the tailored health care you need even if you are incapacitated and so just you know considering the journey that that industry has, has gone on it's very conceivable that that aviation can make that turn too and and so we're I, I think in the process of that journey as an industry that that poll supported it further. You know, some people are really close to the the fully digital, um, you know, piece on the spectrum. Have plans to get there. Other people are just starting the journey, and and that's all natural and good. But that's why we're here today, and and we hope to help you know demystify and and make the the journey a bit more uh, smooth through the content that that we'll cover in the rest of the presentation. Absolutely. You want to hit the next one, Raul? Yep. Or, or advance? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, this, this is, uh, I, I believe we'll be able to provide a link to this, uh, to the updated NBAA guidance. So there was just a revision to the, uh, the, the, the core, you know, NBAA management guide that provides a lot of uh, good information that you can use to help write your manuals or SOPs, other things. So there was a big push recently to publish guidance on going digital. Uh, considerations to take, uh, how you might go about it, the benefits that you should be targeting, uh, concerns and things like that. So uh, extremely handy objective guidance um, from, you know, our main industry uh, uh, kind of um, uh, advocate. And so ultimately, yeah, hopefully we can post something in the um, in the chat here and in, in the links from, from this meeting because it can be kind of tough to find content on MBAA's website at some point sometimes, but um, yeah, please be aware that that does exist and has been updated. Awesome, so we got another uh, poll question for you guys that should be popping up on the screen, but uh, which of the following paperless benefits would you have the most significant impact on your team's performance? So would you see it like increasing operational efficiency, um, substantial, uh, substantial cost reductions, simplifying regulatory compliance, accelerated return to service times? Um, which one of those would be you know, the most significant impact for you? I guess the, the easy way to ask the question is when you sit there and having to do paperwork for hours on end, what are the one things that you're thinking about? Like, man, I could be getting, I could be doing this during this time instead of having to do all this paperwork. All right, we'll move on here. Hopefully we got all the uh, questions in. So we're just gonna open it up right now. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen here, but we're just gonna go over a couple things, you know, to hear from our from our panelists that have uh, uh, decided to join us today. Um, you know, their decision on why, going, why to go digital, um, the important lessons that they've learned along the way, and then uh, the results also that they've experienced from being able to go digital. So I um, think, Kent, I'm going to let you cover the first one there, and then uh, we'll let these uh, gentlemen talk about uh, these questions. Yeah, sure sure thing. Were we going to get the poll results? Oh, I'm sorry. I the I don't have the poll results. There they are. Oh, there they are. <laughs> the poll results show up on our screen. I think an overwhelming uh, response of increased operational efficiency. Yeah, overwhelming. So this is what we're looking like uh, looking at here today. Some people pointed out, yeah, simplified regulatory compliance. You know, uh, blue tail customers have definitely cited you know easier re working relationship with the FAA um, because of of the digital access to records. 
Um, and then obviously accelerated return to service, um, what, you know, the second most important thing uh, compared to the, but still head and shoulders uh, below, you know, just overall increased operational efficiency. And, and one could argue that, you know, return to service falls under, you know, general operational efficiency. So, yeah, I that, think um, that's obviously the operational efficiencies of being paperless, uh, you know, it's much easier to just go to a search bar and type in a serial number, an ATA code or something like that and finding your record in almost lightning speed instead of having to dive through bankers boxes and stuff like that. So that is the obvious one. But, you know, I, I do want to touch on the return to service part. Um, you know, I talk with guys all across the world, uh, you know, and some of the, some of the things that they mention is, you know, they get a work order uh, stack from, you know, the MRO that they went to. Uh, they turn it into their analyst at the competitors, you know, uh, at the competitor. And it's taking 24, 48, 72 hours to turn that aircraft green. And what it causes is an issue between them and their operations side um, that, you know, the pilots, the schedulers, they don't know if that aircraft is good to go yet without making phone calls, text messages, or emails to find out what the real true status of that is. So um, being able to go digital, being able to do your own updates, having everything done electronically, really streamlines that process and like cuts down on that return to service time. Not that the aircraft is not ready to go, but the paperwork and actually having that aircraft green are some of the key points of like getting the communication across the organization. So just wanted to, you know, bring that up. Awesome. Should, should we do the, uh, the panelists round Robin yeah. on the, the next question, Robo? Yeah, we'll move over to, uh, I'll let you cover here the decisions of, uh, the decision to go digital. So. Sounds good. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so we'll, we'll do a, a round Robin. I'll, I'll start with you, Mark. And, and I think really we, you know, we kind of just want to unpack that last poll question a little bit more from your perspective. So the, the question is, you know, what, you know, what catalyzed your decision? You know, what really triggered your decision to say, um, hey, I'm going to prioritize addressing these problems and challenges and prioritize finding a better way to do something in your process or flight department? And of course, yeah, here today to, to think about kind of like the, the digital solutions that you've employed in that process. So, uh, Mark, yeah, to, to start with you, you know, um, can you tell us more about the decision to pursue digital solutions? Well, the digital solution started with the original tracking company that we had when we delivered the airplanes. It was your competitor at uh, camp, of course. And uh, that ball started rolling whenever I started to deliver aircraft number three and four to add to our fleet. And I contacted the, the other participant asking what they could do as a fleet discount as I'm growing and expanding. And I was promptly told there are no fleet discounts. Well, of course, I got a cold call from Mr. Greg Hine, like about two days after that, and I got on board with him and we started talking, and that's when we made the uh, the transfer over to Flight Docs, and we've been very happy with that, and of course, the world is all going digital, as you well know. Um, I am still an old guy here in the industry and still believe in paper logs, and the paper logs are really cumbersome when it comes to selling an aircraft, taking aircraft to maintenance leaving home base. Um, at that point, when Blue Tail came on and started touting their wares, we uh, started looking at it a little more in depth. We contacted them. And I think we were probably one of the first few people that signed on with Blue Tail to start digitizing everything. It's a, a continuous improvement here at the hangar. That's what we strive for in this world. So this makes things a lot easier, a lot cleaner. Uh, there are some hiccups when it comes to us as an operator with these systems, but that's generically us. It's not. It's not the. It's not the systems. It's the way we have to participate within those systems. But like I said, uh, my logbooks have been slowly and steadily decreasing over the last two years to the point of everything is almost all digital, and that's the way we need to run it. It's just more accessible. Uh, we recently sold a Challenger three hundred. And we provided the uh, pre pre buy inspection folks with the uh, access to Blue Tail plus the hard copies, and they were very very comfortable using the digital, and they found everything they needed. But the the hard copies were there just in case. Plus they have to go to the new owner, so that that exited the big one. 
Now, the other ones, they're slowly but surely molding over. We did uh, a big inspection with another MRO this year and provided them access to Blue Tail also. So there were no questions or comments or the hard copies were on site also. But they, the inspection department never had to even look at them because everything was at their fingertips that they needed. So it's a great resource that I'm finding as as an old person in the industry. It's uh, amazing to see all this and it's really needed and welcome. Excellent. Yeah. Really, really appreciate that, Mark. Um, yeah. Uh, keeping it going, Adam, let me, uh, yeah, kick it over to you. Um, you know, what, what were the kinds of things you guys were looking to impact in your journey in terms of, uh, you know, changing process, embracing technology? We know change isn't uh, easy ever. Um, you know, what made it worth it for you guys? So I think, you know, just the increased uh, operational efficiency. I mean, that the return to service times are so much better. Um, obviously, you know, the airplane breaks on the road somewhere and you're at home, need to order a part with Blue Tail. You know, in the mock search, you can just type in that part number. It's going to take about 30 seconds and you're going to have all your information right there. Um, you know, where back, you know, years ago, oh, I guess I got to drive down to the hangar and look out, look it up, whatever. So I think, you know, just the increased operational efficiency, return to service times, um, you know, it's just, it's actually been really helpful. You know, obviously with, with change, you know, you got to get the whole team to buy in. But once they see the benefits, they're like, okay, this is going to save me time in the long run. So pretty much everybody on my team is pretty much bought into everything. So we're doing uh, really well there. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a good uh, partnership so far. So really happy with it. Thanks, Adam and Joe. Last but not least, over to you. You're uh, on mute. I think on uh, mute, Joe. <laughs> I did it. That's the second time. Next time I'm fired. Um, <laughs> so I was going to go over kind of how we we were operating prior to going to to Varion. And kind of give an example, we we started out as about anywhere from 12 to, to 20 aircraft uh, on the 135 certificate. We were operating camp at the time. Um, we used Avionis as our operating uh, system for tracking our flights and scheduling our flights in the in the sales side. And then um, we had a, like a an, it was a it was pretty much an Excel spreadsheet on a like a status board. And it was a manual update of, you know, the jet, the jets offline, the jets online, you know, estimated RTS, you know, so on and so forth, kind of description, what was going on with it, and then maybe the progress on it. So we were, we were very, you know, um, it was all manual updates, pretty much. Um, communication was via email, mostly, uh, for any type of update requests and things like that, other than the status board. Um, for the accounting side, I know this may not be important for some some of the operators out there, but for us, it's huge is to integrate the accounting side, and um, and with Work Center, you know, I can talk a little bit about that. But there was no integration at all with accounting on on the camp side unless you were operating in corridor, um, and then also the um, the progress on like. Uh, the, the programs and things like that. So if you're tracking times and cycles and, and things like that, it's, uh, we, we were doing that in camp also. Um, as far as parts purchases and things like that, it was all external. There was no parts purchase capabilities or anything like that in camp. So we were, we were not able to do that. We ended up doing that via a separate, you know, basic, basically email. So fast forward to now, we're 86 airplanes on CERT. Um, we got another 20 that are being conformed right now. Um, we made the switch to, to Varion and we are now using Varion with some integrations, uh, with an operations system that we generate. We basically built ourselves here at Fly Exclusive and, uh, it gives us an integration between Varion because of the capability and the API that Varion has and being real time, you can, you can basically feed off of it to give you real time update status. Uh, also, you can, if you have the work center application, you can order parts, you can track parts, you can create POs, 
you can track those POs and services and all those things in a one-stop shop. So the, a lot of the manual stuff that we were doing before uh, kind of fast forward to now, it's all, it's all integrated now into a one-stop shop. And if you're looking for historical, I mean, from, you know, the accounting side or whatever it may be, invoicing, anything like that, if you've got a work order that, that has all the history of that work order on it, I mean, from the POs that were, you know, created on it to the work that was performed on it to, um, any, any of the services or anything like that, it's, it's very advantageous to us. So as far as efficiency goes, it's, it's, it's completely turned, uh, us around. So, um, uh, yeah, that's, you know, what, what, what got you to make the move? I'll tell you the, the, the reason why we made the move is, is first of all, the cost of camp to put that many airplanes on, on under camp was a significant savings overall for our, for our company. Um, as, as far as putting them on Baryon versus camp was a significant reduction in cost for us. And then that, like I said, that API real time was probably, it probably even topped the, the cost being able to create those APIs with a company like us was huge. And I know that's not important, uh, may not be as important to some of the, you know, 91 operators and stuff out there, but when it comes to operating a, a large quantity fleet like this, it's, it's significant for us. So that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. Um, so we're going to move on to our, our next, uh, thing that we wanted to cover was just, you know, um, lessons learned on, uh, you know, making this move throughout your, you know, digital, uh, transformation, I guess, uh, going from that paper to, um, becoming more electronic. So, um, you know, anything that you got, uh, the good, bad, ugly, um, on this, um, but, you know, Joe, just to circle back to you and keep you going, but, you know, I know you guys big operation and everything. And I'm sure that there were some things that you learned along the way um, that, you know, if you were to give anyone advice that's on this call today, what, what are some of the things that you would recommend? So, I mean, the, the, the implementation was seamless for us, which was, which was one of the biggest concerns that we had as far as like the actual transition from the very on or flight docs team. Um, that, that was kind of, you know, behind the scenes, it was happening. However, there was constant communication and validation between them and us to verify things and times and cycles and stuff to make sure that all of your information was correct and you're tracking everything correctly. Um, the other thing it did for us, and, and we suspected this and had a gut feeling of this because we had experienced a few incidents where uh, something kind of just all of a sudden came out of the blue and, and was like, well, how, how did that just show up? Or, or, you know what, that thing is only 10 hours away. We, you know, we could have overflown this airplane. Why weren't we tracking it? Right. Uh, why wasn't it selected? And, and during the implementation process, we had quite a few, uh, at the time, I think we were over 60 plus airplanes and bringing that many airplanes right. over the amount of discrepancies that we found in the camp tracking system was significant enough to, to, you know, drive us to create an in-house auditing system uh, to make sure that we periodically go through uh, our, our documents. But the only way we would have known that is, is by doing the transition. And Varion was very thorough with, with that process and, and drew those, those potential you know, issues out at the time of, of implementation. So we did have an auditing process prior to, but some of those tasks and some of those things uh, during the conformity process or during a previous ownership or whatever it may be, uh, once you go through those historical records and you start drawing all that out, there could have been a repair that was, you know, years ago and it's got a reoccurring requirement or needs to be verified or something like that. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was great for us. Um, other than that, I, I uh, what else was there? A uh, change in management as far as the amount of people that we need is that is that I, I yeah I mean just a lesson I mean, learned on it I mean you know from the amount of could it be from the amount of people you had doing the job to now what you need to actually do the job or something you know yeah I mean we we've we've taken our QA department from almost twelve individuals uh you know going through going through paperwork continuously updating camp doing all those things. Uh, we're down now to down now down to three personnel in there, 
So we have we have a supervisor and then two actual maintenance administrators that do uh, screening and updating. So we you you can see there that you know through a through a, a activity based analysis of what was needed, it, it it we realigned to meet you know the the requirements of that. So you can see there's a substa substantial reduction in in staffing there uh, due to the efficiencies of the of the uh, the application. Awesome. Yeah, and for anyone who's on the call who hasn't uh, experienced going through an enrollment process at Varian, uh, it's not like a simple copy and paste of your data and we hand it back to you. Um, you know, we do have a QA team on our side as well. Those are the people who brought, you know, things to Joe and his team's attention, such as like, hey, we realize that this isn't up to latest revision or the intervals off. And, you know, we do QA the data. We make sure that everything is up to date to the latest chapter four, chapter five check. Um, we do customer review. Uh, we'll send over a customer review sheet just to let them know, like, these are the discrepancies we found. We highlight them. We send them over to the customer and wait for them to review them and send them back with the corrections that need to happen. So um, just wanted to let you know how what to expect when going through an, uh, an enrollment process with our onboarding team. Um, pass it over to, to Adam, uh, just on lessons learned and things like that that you did throughout this process. So... On our challengers, we got those uh, new in 2013. So, and we were looking for a change, you know, on a different tracking system. We previously had camp on our Falcon 50s. And, you know, obviously enrolling with uh, flight docs at the time, um, it was pretty seamless. And, you know, just basically, uh, I mean, it was just seamless. Um, no big issue there um, with the, Blue tail, you know, we got them about a year ago and it was, you know, a gentleman came out, scanned all our log books, said it'd be a couple of weeks before everything got entered into the system. And then we could start using the mock search features and, and that, that worked really well. And, you know, we, you know, honestly, I probably use, use that almost every day. Um, but yeah, as far as for the change management, it was, you know, basically just getting used to a different system, learning how to navigate the, the website, you know, figuring out, you know, how to sign the cards off. Um, but really, it's it's pretty once you do it a few times, it becomes second nature and pretty seamless for, you know, the technicians and myself to use. So, uh, yeah, it's been been pretty, pretty easy, really. And, you know, thing I like, too, is you guys are always about continuous improvement. We bring up suggestions you guys implement them um, and everybody's very helpful on that end. So yeah, that's about all I got really. Gotcha. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Mark, what did you, uh, what did you learn throughout all the changes? Uh, your system at Varian is much better than camp ever was. You, you guys do a great job with uh, like Adam just said, with implementing change. It's uh, very simple to make a phone call and, uh, I give Blue Tail a lot of credit too. They're very, very willing to work with us. My setup here is I have each technician of mine responsible for one aircraft. So I had them pull an audit of each individual aircraft versus the TLMCs for or the Challenger and the Global. Just trying to find things that uh, were kind of not matching and not missing. There was very few. And we were able to, with uh, Varion's help, is package a lot of these inspections from individual line items and parent and child codes right? for the 600, 800 hour inspections, which makes the paperwork a lot less uh, when it comes to your due sheets. Uh, and it, they, those guys, when my guys went through that very thoroughly and made sure everything lined up with everything else, plus adding our, in, we were able to add our own individual things. We do a 30 day service check, for example. Uh, we, uh, we told you guys at Varia what we wanted is the data, and you put together a package for that. So it's just it, the continuous improvement is is tremendous, especially coming from, like I said, I'm an old mechanic. I came from paper, heavy paper, and this is kind of refreshing. And I'm glad to see that you guys are far enough ahead with this to keep it going because it's uh, it's always going to be changing, and it's always going to be getting more and more faster and quicker. Um, we've used, uh, the blue tail to make individual log books, for example, for our wheels, because we have spare wheels and they rotate through the airplanes. So they each have their own individual log books now, because you have to track the landings in the tire changes. So it, it makes that seamless. 
And like I said, whenever we sold the airplane recently, we just pulled down all the wheel logs that went with the airplane and handed it to them on a flash drive. There you go, babe. See you later. But uh, overall, it's been very good. Lessons learned have been uh, good for both sides, I think. You know, we've taught you guys at very on a lot. I mean, just by the way the challengers work, because we've been on board with you guys with that since the very beginning. So it's it, it's been a good, good, good experience, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, been with the company for five years. I know that being around for over 20, um, you know, the product was built pretty much on recommendations like Mark's team and, you know, everyone else that's out there. So, I mean, we took a lot of the feedback that we got back from the field. We wanted to make a product that, you know, was suitable for everyone and did all the functions and features that you would want out of a maintenance tracking program. But uh, just to touch on what Mark said, uh, you know, at Varian, we obviously, we go through your data, we move everything over, we QA it all. But not only that, we we don't handcuff you to, you know, to us. Like if, you know, you have the permissions in the system as an admin, you have the ability to make those, you know, adjustments to codes. If there's a tolerance that you need to update or even adding in a custom code, like Mark was mentioning, like a 30 day check that isn't in the maintenance manual, but it's something that PNC wanted to do. Uh, you have the ability to create those items. You even can mark them as optional items so that they don't turn your do list red. Um, but it's just something to keep track on your aircraft. And then you'll have all the historical compliance of all those optional codes that you created too. So just a, just a, a feature, um, uh, you know, that we have built into the system. Um, moving on to the, to the last question here, uh, results that you have experienced since this. So I know, you know, some of you, some of you have already talked about like how it was before digital and how it is now, but just like maybe a couple points of like, just real like things that you said, man, that's, it was a drastic change from where we we're at to not where we're at today. Um, Adam, you got some of those things that are like just the, you know, obviously hit you right, hit you right in the face there. When you, when you made this change, you were like, wow. Uh, you're on mute, Adam. Sorry. <laughs> you're going to have to fire me too. <laughs> well, you're um Joe's got two strikes. You only got one. So, I mean, he's close. <laughs> hopefully I don't, hopefully I don't get a curveball now. Yeah. <laughs> um, just the efficiencies. I mean, within the whole flight department, I mean, all of our pilots have flight docs access, you know, before each flight, you know, before they go out on their trip, they're looking at work completed. They're looking at do list. Um, they've, you know, the feedback I hear from the pilots, they find it very easy to work in the system. Um, you know, obviously, if they're out on the road, plane breaks, they have to MEL something. Obviously, we're still helping them do do that, make sure there's not a maintenance action required, and, um, you know, make sure they're comfortable. Um, but, yeah, that's, you know, our pilots, they pretty much rave about it, where, you know, previously with camp, I don't think they really had anything that they – you know, besides a, a debrief with the maintenance guy before the flight. Right. So that's definitely one efficiency uh, gained. Um, and obviously with Blue Tail, I mean, you're, you're ordering a part and you look in the IPC and it's like, okay, now it depends on service bulletin applicability status. Okay. Instead of going back and getting the log books, now I can just, you know, type type that service bulletin in that mock search and boom, 30 seconds later, I now have that information. No, I'm ordering the correct part, you know, for the plane. Um, just been uh, been very good with the efficiency. I mean, our time is cut drastically with having having these two systems. So I, I always like to make the joke, uh, it gets you to happy hour on time, right? So uh, exactly. you're not sitting in the office having to, having to do paperwork. But yeah. Uh, yeah, just just a, a, a touch on that, um, Adam, I mean, for anyone out there who doesn't know, I mean, we do have, you know, native mobile apps. I don't know if you guys can, you guys can't see it. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm we sorry, did. But um, we have native mobile apps. Nice thing about that, there is a specific screen called the pilot dashboard um, that gives your pilots that heads up display of what's happening right from, you know, one screen on, on that aircraft. Are there any items past due? Are there any open non-routines? They can even write up non-routines uh, right from their iPad to the point of taking pictures and videos of the occurrence and having those tagged to the non-routine so that it goes over to maintenance in real time with an email notification and they can see what's happening and start making corrective action decisions to minimize the downtime on that aircraft. So um, pilots love technology. We know that. And uh, if they have all of that right at their iPad, which 
We know they all have one on their hands because of four flight. Um, you know, it makes their lives a lot easier. Um, I think, uh, Mark, same question back to you. Uh, results that you've experienced with you and your team. We have also, to tag on with what Adam was saying, we have a, come together with uh, Varion and put together a pre-flight, post-flight sheet that we track inside your system under checklists. And uh, this is exactly where my crews go to see what's going on. We have also uh, subscribed with uh, Varion to provide our MELs, which you guys do and provide the DDG with that. So the pilots have everything at their fingertips. They're housed in the uh, document section on, on the Varion app. Everything is one-stop shopping. I can see it all from my iPad and run it. We also utilize the uh, watch list feature under the non-routines mm -hmm. for tracking things that the crews come up with and we can't duplicate. So we'll throw it on a watch list for five flights. And if it doesn't reoccur, then we sign it off as could not duplicate. But everybody can see it, but it does not show up as an open discrepancy, which is a good thing. We mm -hmm. use the watch list the right way. Uh, lessons learned over all this and uh, has been very positive for my crews. They they like it a lot. Now, getting them to enter things in the non-routine sometimes can be challenging, but that's the norm around the world. You know, that is, the, oh, by the way, uh, yeah. no, we're, we're very insistent on that here that these guys do what they're supposed to do the right way in the flight docs. That's why we set it up this way. And it is our basic communication between uh, ground and ops around here without a doubt. I mean, plus there is the uh, physical debrief, brief and debrief every day anyway, but we also have sections for that in our post-flight sheets also. So it, it's just, it's a good one-stop shop for everything for us. Nice. And then we use uh, PFM as a flight does for, you know, scheduling and the times and cycles from the airplanes feed directly to vary on. And then makes it very easy when it comes to logbook entries, uh, tracking times and cycles, the whole nine yards. It, it's very interactive together. Everybody plays nice in the sandbox and it makes my life a lot easier. Awesome. So, so, so less napkins left on the seat for you to find the, the next morning, right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, three weeks later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotcha. Joe, uh, what, what is, uh, you know, what are the results, uh, you know, that you've experienced from this as a whole? I know there's probably a long list with everything you had going on, but. Yeah, I think I kind of mentioned the efficiencies yeah. that we gained in the quality of part department, you know, just reduction in, in, and staffing, uh, which overall made us just so much more efficient. I would say that I could, you know, just talking about uh, possibly the pre-buy uh, conformity process um, for, you know, there was a lot of concerns uh, at the beginning that it would, you know, by moving the airplanes over to another maintenance data platform from camp because camp is this known, you know, industry, uh, everybody understands and knows it type of, of maintenance data system. There was a little bit of reluctancy to do that, thinking that it may devalue the the aircraft or something like that. But I, I will tell you that through the process of bringing all of our airplanes over onto it, and then as we move airplanes on and off of our fleet here, uh, it you know the, the the we get a lot of comments um, now that are how did it only take you you know this many days to 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 move this airplane on to cert, but then it took this many days to move the same airplane on to cert. And it was typically the most common answer is, well, the plane that we were moving was on blue tail and very on prior to. And so researching all the documents and the things that you need to research to bring that airplane over onto certificate was reduced significantly in efficiency. So, I mean, you know, saying that it devalues the airplane, I, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of hogwash, honestly. I mean, it's, it, it gives you complete searchability for all the records on the blue tail side. And as far as flight docs, you know, very on uh, side of it, there's no difference and, or there's more tracking on that, on that side if if anything, and it's more real time. So, you know, that, that's one of our, I, I think I can talk, you know, through, you know, I think we've got, we're down to a hundred or up to, I should say 170 uh, conformity processes in the last 24 months. I think it is. So we, we're, we're jamming them. We're taking a lot of jets off of cert because of a refresh process that we're going through here. 
and we're bringing a lot of different airplanes on cert and there's lease terminations and things like that that happen all the time so there's a continuous um you know removal from the from our certificate and then we're always bringing airplanes on our certificate so we see the value of that here real time and and it is significant um yeah, that's that's pretty, pretty good much marketing it. play when you make everyone think that if you leave us you're going to lose money you know so well uh, i mean it's not that it's just it it you know it it's glaring when you're in a, a position like mine because there's always pressure on me to get the airplanes conformed as fast as possible and get them on certificate. And when, you know, I have a conformity team that's designated to do this process and, and we have a, a set process on how we do it. But then when we have to jump around to these different systems and some of them are so, you know, in, in, non-intuitive and, 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 and prehistoric that it just it's a lot of manual digging through paperwork to try to find the answers to to the questions and and through blue tail and through Varion, it's just so much easier and more efficient and it's plain and simple yeah thank you joe um gonna go back we got a couple more slides to to cover here um and then uh we will get to it so uh one moment Kent, if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up, making sure I shared the screen right. <laughs> All right. Got it. Not the best uh, PowerPoint slide presenter in the world, but they gave me the steering wheel today. So, uh... All right. Um, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted to just talk a little bit about why uh, Blue Tail and, and Varian are better together, and, and, and especially in the context of uh, digitizing your processes to to gain operational efficiency. So from my perspective, what Varion allows you to do is, is positively impact your operational efficiency going forward from a point in time, um, you know, and, and to being able to, you know, the maintenance tracking is focused on kind of the do list out. So it's focused on the future. It's focused on getting stuff done today, things like that. Um, Blue Tail, on the other hand, allows you to retroactively embrace uh, digital solutions. And so by virtue of us going in, scanning your records, um, enabling you to search the content of those records via mock search, which, which a few of these guys brought up. So basically the, the combined capability provides you with a, a digital maintenance operations platform, a maintenance tracking platform, as well as a digital record keeping solution. And so the, these things are very powerful um, when used in, con in conjunction you know, a lot of times, you know, um, these guys touched on like needing to conform aircraft, audit aircraft, make sure it's accurate. I, I would pose to the audience that the combined solution allows you to get your maintenance data perfect. Um, absent of, of digital op options, you know, it's really, you know, cost prohibitive, labor time prohibitive to really do that three-way match between your maintenance tracking data, your maintenance manual, and your single source of truth um, logbook entries. You, you know, there's a lot to sync up between those things from the, the correct intervals and the maintenance manuals to maintenance tracking to the correct last complied with data um, from your logbook entries. And, and without these tools in place, um, it's a lot easier for things to fall through the cracks and it's a lot slower um, to make sure, you know, like in a conformity process, for example, that that it's good and, and bulletproof in terms of presenting that to the regulator. Uh, so I, I think, yeah, that's just what I wanted to touch on here of like why we're better together. And then have just a couple um, more slides here in, in terms of just talking to like, well, how exactly does that work, you know, once we're live with both systems? Yeah, I, I tell people, you know, Blue Tail and Varian, very synergistic. Um, and for any of you guys out there who may be posing the question, um, Blue Tail and I have brought over operators uh, at the same time, pretty much ripped the Band-Aid and left. Most of the time it's camp. Um, and I would say that cost-wise, uh, we have seen that Blue Tail and Varion together is, sub is sometimes the same, sometimes less, but really not much more than what you're just paying for camp maintenance tracking today. So just letting you know. So yeah, just just real briefly, because obviously this would be better uh, handled in a you know in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But 
if you imagine yourself onboarded to Varian, imagine yourself onboarded to Blue Tail, uh, what you need, what you need, then need to do is keep your digital record keeping uh, system up to date. Uh, your via your process, no matter you know if you came from any maintenance tracking provider, you are already have in your process the the point at, at which time you send records um, to an to an analyst or the point in time at which you do the updates yourself in the system. At that point, you're uploading documentation into the maintenance tracking system. And so with our integration, we are able to pull the any finalized logbook entries uh, out of Varian, especially key, you know, when using um, e-signatures. So we can automatically um, sync up any logbook entries for work that you do in-house, as well as grab anything attached to a work completed record inside Varian, which would be um, basically the work packages or logbook entries uh, from work you've outsourced to service centers. So through these two channels, uh, we can make sure that the digital record keeping system stays up to date. As soon as anything flows into Blue Tail, it's automatically mock searched. Um, and just just to borrow from the slogan uh, at, at Fly Exclusive that I see painted on all the doors and walls, minutes matter um, in our in our industry, and and especially in those key cases of you know you need to turn around an aircraft that might be on the road, and you know there there's some issues, and you're coming down to the wire. Um, you really feel when those minutes matter, and the combined digital solution can can make things happen when they otherwise couldn't. Absolutely. Um, yeah, th this is just some screenshots of, you know, the integration status in, in Blue Tail that reflects, you know, here's the last time we pulled things uh, out of Varian and as well as the mock search capability. So once everything's pulled over, you know, you can search the content of the documents. Obviously, Varian has some powerful search capabilities as well. But if, for example, you need to dive deeper into a document to find like the paint code uh, very quickly or locate a wiring diagram that can help somebody troubleshoot something. You know, that's where in the, the blue tail mock search will really shine. Um, I know we, uh, we're, we're getting really close on time here, um, but just uh, super quick, you know, Adam, um, you know, would you rather ha have instant access to your maintenance records or streamline compliance uh, audits with uh, minimal effort? I mean, for me, it's just, you know, having that instant access, I mean, like I said earlier, you're at home, the airplane breaks, right? Boom. You you log in almost at the and, palm of your hand, right? Yeah. 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 There's and you know, it's just simplistic, really. Um, you know, even from you know, scanning the completion documents, you know, looking at all that. I mean, just uh it's really simplistic to have that information wherever you are mm -hmm. and you know, at your fingertips. Gotcha. For sure. Uh, Joe, I know for you as a uh, heavy revenue org, uh, would you rather reduce your maintenance costs by 20% or cut your RTS time in half? I mean, they... they you can't have both, even though I know you want them. Yeah, you know, like I said before, I, I want both. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the 20% the 20, the 20 reduction in cost is is great. But all in all, your reduction in RTS time is what makes you revenue. And so, you know, sometimes you 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 can pay a little more to get that airplane returned to you know return to service faster. Um, but but you know, from my world, like I say, it's all equally kind of driven. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know if we're strapped for time. There was a couple of chat questions in there. Um, I'll, I'll we I'll got five minutes on. left. Okay, I'm just gonna say I'm willing to stay on if if we need to answer those. So just let me know. Yeah, but, you know we can me, the RTS. Gotcha. And uh, Mark, um, eliminating all paper-based uh, processes or fully automating your maintenance tracking? Well, I want them both also, but you already gave me one with the automatic, the uh, automate my maintenance tracking. I already have that. Well, so that the, you, the, the, process, the paper process is the last thing to go, dude. There you go. Your answer is easy then. See? All right. Well, we got those questions up for the for the uh, audience as well. We'll uh, we'll look at the uh, responses here that we get from those. See if they're aligned with you guys. Um, let me see. I think uh, let's see if we get the results here in a second. Awesome. So looks like instant access. Uh, looks like everyone's with you on that one. That or most people are with you on that one, Adam. Uh, RTS times are definitely, uh, you know, 
definitely went in, went in the race there. And then uh, eliminating paper um, is uh, where we're at with the third one. So thank you guys. Um, so last, last question really quick. Uh, this one's really simple is just, you know, would you like a follow-up after this? Um, obviously, you know, myself along with Kent and his team, um, you know, we're more than happy to even go beyond this uh, presentation, do a further demo, show you everything that the product can do. Um, if you do need us, uh, to reach out or, I mean, for any of you guys who know us and have our emails, please feel free to reach out to us as well. But, um, let us know if you'd like to get pricing demo or anything on, uh, what we have to offer on, uh, on this. I know we have some questions that I want to get to before the time is up. Um, I've got one that I know I'm, I'm going to handle here in a moment. Um, last thing I just wanted to sh show you guys, we'll cover the questions. I'll, I'll turn the screen off to answer some of those questions. But last thing we wanted to show really quick for any of you that are attending MBAA uh, base um, in uh, October, uh, just to let you know, Blue Tail and Varion are pretty much right next to each other. Uh, there's our booth numbers. We'd love for you guys to come, uh, you know, pay us a visit, talk to us face to face. We even have a cocktail hour that's happening, which I believe uh, the marketing team is going to be sending out a link to if you'd like to join us um, in Vegas for that. Uh, it'll be at the booth. But um, yeah, just uh, wanted to point this out. So in case of anyone that was going, uh, knew exactly where to find us. But um, going to the questions here, um, I know there was a question about digital signatures and how uh, do you handle digital signatures when it comes to third-party maintenance vendors, uh, especially like AOGs uh, events or anything like that? Um, great thing about Varian, uh, we, uh, you as an admin on the account, you could essentially grant access and remove access to anyone that you want at any time. Um, with that access, you can also enable their digital signatures and even enter in their cert numbers, like for example, like their AMP number or whatever it may be. Um, and then that can be temporary access. So if you do have an AOG event, you know, you're based out of Florida, the, the plane's in California, you need someone to, you know, uh, take care of some compliance or do a corrective action on a squawk, uh, you can grant that access, they can have access to the records to whatever limited fashion that you want them to have, and um, perform the, uh, the paperwork that needs to be done to get that aircraft back up and, uh, and uh, fly in there for you. Um, believe there might have been a couple other questions. I know, Joe, you uh, you said you saw a question that you wanted to answer there. Or... Yeah, I, I went ahead and answered the oh, okay. uh, questions in the post there, kind of how we uh, here specifically at Fly Exclusive attack the the um, the digital signature from a, a an AOG perspective or from a non uh, Fly Exclusive slash MRO uh, okay. yes. individual. So yeah, we you know we we have approved vendor listings, you know, we, we, we add them to our approved vendor listing and then we create a temporary account in, in Varian, And then that gives them the, you know, with digital signature access, and then they can perform anything they need to via their iPad or iPhone or laptop computer or whatever that is. Um, and then we have the historical records, obviously, because we've, we always request the front and back of their MP so we can put it on file. Um, usually drug program if they're affiliated with the MRO and it's one of our re requirements. Um, and then however you want to sign it off, if they're under a cert, you know, under an MRO or a repair station or whatever it may be, you, you can, you can handle that any way that your, you know, your company does that or your, or your client or owner does that. So yeah, that's just the way we do it. I don't know if anybody else does it any different, Adam or, or Mark, but that's the way we do it. And I, I answered that in the chat. I think everybody can see that. I think, I hope it was under questions and answers, I think. Awesome. Um, yeah, any other questions? I'm not, uh, maybe I'm not sure if it's my view or not. I'm not seeing any other ones. Um, can yeah, one of them was uh, okay. training, can training on updated customer tracking I'm not sure, Dwayne, I understand exactly what you're talking about. If you're talking about, uh, I work for an MRO and we often do this, but rarely have a customer with flight docs and I would like to probably have better. So, oh, so I think what he's saying, Raul, is can there be training without them having very on? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, if you, if you guys reach out, we, we do have a team that's, uh, 
that's capable of doing training. Um, nice thing about Varian, for any of you that have never had training or never logged into it before, uh, we do have a built-in user guide that's right at the bottom. Uh, if you look at the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a little question mark, you click there, teaches you how to do essentially everything that's within the platform um, at a high level. But of course, we'd be more than happy to do training uh, with any of the MROs out there that aren't that don't really have aircraft that they're managing themselves, but have aircraft coming in that are on Varion. So of course, yeah, we want you to know how to use the system and be able to be uh, proficient at it. Yeah, our uh, our MRO currently, Raul, our MRO does not use uh, Varion for right. external customers. So we, yeah, we we provide some training for them. But yeah, you're 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 absolutely right. I mean, typically, it's so easy. I mean. You, you, yeah, you can't really. I'm, I, I'm, I would say I if you look at if you look at you know uh, you know when it comes to customer reviews and people doing their uh, you know uh, their review platforms on on the internet, I think Captera is a really big one when it comes to software reviews. The unanimous theme that you see across all of our platform reviews is like the user interface and intuitiveness of the system. I mean that is like everyone, everyone mentions that. I mean, you want to, you're trying to get to a certain page or navigate to a certain place. Usually the button's right in front of your face and it only takes two or three clicks to get there. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I think Kent, you know, like the, uh, the rule of thumb there, it's like the three click rule. If it takes you more than three clicks to get to where you're trying to go, then we did our, we didn't do our jobs. So, um, you know, that's how the platform was built and we make it very easy to navigate through the whole system. So, um, just to be respectful of everyone's time though, we'll we'll close this up. Um, I wanted to thank everyone, our panelists. Kent, thanks for co-hosting with me today. Um, those of you who are able to join um, and uh, and be a part of this, um, really wanna thank you guys. Uh, Kent, pass it to you if you want. Yeah, I, I think you said it all, Raul. It's, um, hopefully this was informative and and I think, uh, yeah, you'll find it with Varion and Blue Tail. We're an organization that, uh, likes to collaborate with our customers and, and work with them to, to find solutions. We, we see ourselves as supporting customers rather than uh, telling them, you know, how to do their jobs. So um, yeah, that, that's us. And we'd love to engage with you guys. Yeah. By all means, uh, don't be shy. Feel free to reach out. Even if you just want to, you know, take a look, kick some tires. I don't mind. I love uh, learning about what's going on out there and uh, showing you what we have to offer. I mean, uh, I will say that, Many of the people that I spoke with that have never taken a look at what we have to offer are sometimes it's a little bit of regret that I can hear in their voice of saying, man, I wish I would have saw this sooner. And uh, I'm sure Kent, uh, you you guys probably hear the same stuff. So um, love to love to just have the chat with you guys. And if anything, if you don't have the time and you're at base, stop by the booth and come say hi. But uh, as to Adam, Joe, Mark, thank you guys very much. Really appreciate you guys sharing your uh, words of wisdom with us today and um, looking forward to the next webinar. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.